everybody to, to see. Yes. So now the recording is uh, started. So thank you so much, Yusuf, for your input on the Google Classroom for the discussion. You uh, eloquently uh, presented why do you want to pursue uh, um, engineering or yes. uh, computer engineering. You gave good reasons. So thank you so much. As thank I you. mentioned, uh, Unit 1 will be uh, about poetry, and as I mentioned, poetry uh, is really important for students to uh, appreciate and to get critical thinking and to uh, start liking the uh, uh, the material presented. Yeah. Yes. Uh, gradually, we'll be talking about the types of poems, and uh, the the assignments will be as well easy for you to to master yes. because I we really want you to get uh, high marks. So mm -hmm. now let's start um, getting to know certain terminology or what we call poetry glossary. Uh, yes. So uh, when you look at a, a poem, you need to look at the sounds in the poem, what we call the rhymes and rhythms, the music mm -hmm. of the poem. Because yes. poetry is meant to be heard by the ears and felt by the heart. Okay? Yes. And also for the... Uh, critical thinking and improving the thinking abilities at the reader, the poets use metaphors, which is yes. like not direct words. We will get to know examples of those. In the final yes. exam or in any exam, you will have some questions about what does this mean? What does this mean? Not necessarily to learn it by heart because the questions yes. will be mainly either multiple choice or matching which yes. means you just get to know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not um, encouraging anybody to memorize, but just mm -hmm. to get to know the terminology. Okay. Yes. So now when we say stanza, it is the set amount of lines in poetry grouped together uh, mm -hmm. with a certain length, meter, or rhythm. Now, when you write an essay, what is it formed of? It is formed of paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Now, about yes. poetry, what is it formed of? It is formed of stanza. Uh, similar to paragraph, but we don't call it paragraph, we call it stanza. Okay? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, the couplets, now I'm talking to you about the, uh, the shape and size. Couplet is a stanza of two lines. You will see mm -hmm. many examples later on. Yes. Uh, tercet is the three-line stanza. Quatrain, yes. four, st four lines. Uh, Sinican, Five lines, cystic, mm -hmm. uh, six lines. You notice that these are taken from Latin, uh, Latin. words. Yes. That's why it's a little bit uh, not uh, common. Mm -hmm. The meter, what is the meter? It is the pattern of a stressed syllables. So when you say um, uh, break, 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 this is one syllable, you could feel the sound mm -hmm. in the word. Or if I say, um, tiger, tiger, burning bright, you could feel the rhythm. Look, listen to the music, tiger, tiger, burning bright. So yes. This is kind of the music, the pattern, the syllables. Are they stressed or mm -hmm. not stressed? This is what we call the meter. The rhythm scheme, the rhyme uh, scheme is yes. the rhyme that comes at the end of each line you will see uh, the first thing you do when you read a poem you look at the ending the last word in each line are yes. they uh, the same uh, sound and and i repeat sound not writing because sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you find the word uh, that is spelled in a different way but the sound is the same so you watch yes. for the last ending words of each line do they have the same sound or not okay yes now, let's talk about the syllable the syllable is the single unbroken sound of a of a spoken or written word look at the word word here how mm. many how many syllables word one. did i have to stop bravo it's one when i say spoken spoken how many syllables here in spoken two Excellent. So you know now what we are talking about. It's about the syllable, hmm. the, yes. the, the sound, if it is uh, broken uh, or not. Yes. Okay. The sound devices, uh, generally speaking, poets use pattern of deliberate repetitions. Remember the, the poem for William Worth? 
uh, word uh, break, break, break. Tiger, mm -hmm. tiger, burning bright. So you will see that the sound uh, is really huge in using, uh, in writing poetry. So the yes. poets use the pattern to create music. This music can be created by repetition. So when you find repetition, you need to say, here is a musical device repetition, okay? Yes. Uh, to give it sound effect. These effects are used to emphasize the meaning and the feeling. Look at that. So this is, uh, uh, I usually advise my students, this is uh, um, an answer that can be given for any question related to uh, meta metaphor or why did the poet use this image or why did the poet uh, uh, use this as a music? All of them, they are yes. used to emphasize the meaning or the feeling and mm -hmm. most often try to show the tone of the speaker. Now, yes. if, if the writer is, uh, the poet is, is happy, you will see the words giggling and the sound the splashing water, that this kind of thing, you could feel the tone yes. of the poet. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at some examples of uh, sound effect in poems. Like, look at the rhyme. It's uh, in, uh, identical sounds at the end of the lines. And again, we speak about the rhyme, not necessarily to have the same spelling, but the yes. same sound, same mm -hmm. sound. Okay. Yes. The cat and the hat sat on a mat. Look at that. So here is, mm -hmm. you see, cat, hat, mat, and sat. All of yes. these you have here rhyme here, and some music. Mm -hmm. Rhythm. The rhythm is the repetition of numbers of beats in a nearby lines. Just like when I tell you, tiger, tiger, burning bright. Look at the music here. Or when you say, Ahamti Dumti set on the wall, you could see mm -hmm. that this is music all together in the nearby lines. They are all together on the same line, and there's yes. some kind of music. Yes. Alliteration, I'm really fond of this, but you will see it in many, many, many poetry all over. Alliteration mm -hmm. is the repetition of a consonant sound in lines. And please take care of that because many students make mistake by just writing any words that they are repeated. Just uh -huh. look at that. Look at here what we say, burning bright, which words show the consonant sounds Consonant sound, which is like not E, I, O, uh, yes. U, not the vowels, then it is alliteration. Look here, burning yes. bright. So the repetition of the B, B here is uh -huh. what we call, is what we call what? The alliteration. Alliteration. Yes, alliteration is the repetition of the consonant sound. Consonant yes. sound, meaning the sound that is not a vowel. You could see mm. the, 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 ka. Yes. Any of those sounds are uh, uh, consonant. Like yes. here, uh, frame thy fearful symmetry by William Blake from Tiger, Tiger. This is a wonderful poem that we will be also reading. So yes. frame thy fearful symmetry. So the uh, alliteration here is very uh, clear in burning bright. Mm -hmm. Assonance, it is the repetition of the vowel. You see, these are opposite of each other. Like alliteration, yes. the repetition of consonant. Yeah. Assonance, repetition of vowel ah, sounds. Yes. Look here, like this here. Uh, waiting, it's leaping and deep, cool murmur. The mm -hmm. OO, the EE, -E, the LEA, see the leaping, deep, deep. You see that? So, yes. as you can see here, EA is mm -hmm. not the same spelling as EEE. -E -E. However, it is the same sound. Yes. You know what I mean? So, this, yeah. is, this is what we mean by uh, assonance, which is the repetition of vowels. All right, uh, he gives his harness bells a shake. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the use of e, e, uh, e, ah, uh, e, ah, uh, in yes. the vowels here. So in order to figure it out, you need to read it to yourself in a slow, uh, quiet voice to in order to listen to the music and you could tell it.
Ephony is the combination of pleasant sound in a group of lines. Look at that. Here is an example of Ephony mm -hmm. uh, in Shakespeare's uh, sonnet number 18, when he says, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Mm -hmm. uh, thee uh, means you in Old English. So get uh, prepare yourself to, uh, because you will also study uh, something related to Shakespeare. Uh, yes. However, uh, we would be able to figure out the um, different language. But look at the effect here. The ephony is the pleasant effect. Look at the nice yes. words. If 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 uh, a, a man or a young man is talking to his girlfriend and saying mm. to her, so long, I will love you, so long as men can breathe, I will mm -hmm. continue loving you until people... As long as people can breathe. Look at the word the men here. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. men, female. It means people. Okay? Yes. Uh, yes. Or eyes can see. Look at the beauty of the expression here. Mm -hmm. It means his love is going to be what? Endless. Okay? So yes. long he lives this and this gives life to thee. So all of these I will be uh, giving you life forever to, yes. to, to love you with. So this is ephony. How how we get it? Because the words are nice, positive, yes. full of energy, full of love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, cacophony here is the repetition. It's the opposite. Cacophony is the repetition of harsh, unpleasant sound. It's like yes. when you are describing something bad. Or you can say it is raining. You may hear the rain on the sidewalk. You hear yes. the street musician playing music. These sights and sounds happened at once. So rain and the thunder and the people in the street, it is not the best image ever. So this is what we call a uh, cacophony that causes a kind of stress. Okay, yes. it's absolutely opposite from the other one. Omonotopia, this is another one. As you can see, the expressions mm -hmm. mainly are Latin because they are taken from uh, the Greek. They are the first people to write, you know, wonderful poetry and so on. So yes. onomatopoeia is the sound of the thing. Now, mm -hmm. if you uh, if you have, uh, like, I have a pen now. If I, did you hear that? Yes. I dropped the pen on, the pen on my desk. So this sound is the push sound. If yes. you are throwing a stone in the water, what is the sound you're going to hear? Definitely it's the splash, splash. Yes. So you will see that the poet is writing those words. If you see those strange words like choo, 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 this is the sound of uh, train. the train. Yes. Hiss, hiss is the sound of a snake or yes. the sound of the leaves in the fall uh, season when they are falling on the ground and people walk through them. It has a, um, a feeling of uh, uncomfortable, like uh, mm -hmm. the, the sound buzz, maybe if you are talking about bees or about uh, talking about a street that is busy and you use yes. those words. So those words, the poets use them as onomatopoeia. This is figures of speech. Mm -hmm. These are gay, grew, um, good techniques to be used. We usually mm -hmm. thank the uh, poets to, to use these wonderful uh, examples. We still have another yes. uh, pack for uh, definitions for um, use of words, but I would like you yes. to have a look at uh, a poem here to, to see how those sounds are reflected. Okay? Yes. Okay. okay just a second. to my middle school students because a lot of times how can the sound of a poem impact the reader's emotions 
In this lesson, you will learn how poets use sound to influence emotion by finding repetition, rhyme, and alliteration, and then examining the feelings created. Sound is created by poets in numerous ways. Three of those ways are repetition, rhyme, and alliteration. Repetition in a poem comes in many different forms. Sounds, words, and lines can all be repeated for effect in a poem. The repetition of words or lines in a poem acts much like a chorus in a song, helping readers or listeners remember the lines, feel connected to them, and want to keep reading to hear the rhythm inherent in them. Rhyming words in poems also help certain words stand out. Our early experiences with poetry often involve rhyming. Think of Dr. Seuss as an example. Rhyming words can be found at the ends of lines or within lines in poetry. Finally, another sound device in poetry is alliteration, which is a repetition of consonant sounds. For instance, the words sneaky snake are an example of alliteration because the S sound is repeated. In the phrase dropped the drum, the dr sound is repeated. Note that in the second example where dr is repeated, dr, it is not just one letter that's repeated but one sound made by two letters. That also counts as an example of alliteration. Finding sound in a poem can be challenging. One common mistake is not reading the poem aloud. Because alliteration can be formed by single letter or multiple letter sounds, it is much easier to hear the repeated sound patterns when you read aloud. It's also easy to hear examples of rhyme and repetition as you read aloud, because the sounds will be catchy and rhythmic, and therefore they'll kind of jump out at you. Let's start by reading the poem aloud, listening for examples of repetition, rhyme, and alliteration. I will highlight repetition in yellow, rhyme in green, and alliteration in blue. Let's practice together with the first three stanzas. So in stanza one, it says, I'm from PS1 to PS3, to movies, to TV shows. I play and I watch Resident Evil. In stanza one, there are two examples of repetition, line one, and line 3. Although these phrases are different, they both show repetition. The first line repeats the abbreviation PS, short for PlayStation. The third line repeats the same type of grammar, I and a verb, I and a verb, I play and I watch. In stanza 2 it says, I'm from a city that can handle crime most of the time, to school that is boring by the way, to sometimes friendly teachers, to lots of homework, to friends. In stanza 2, line 6 rhymes, crime most of the time. Line 7 to 11 have another grammatical repetition, using two over and over again. In stanza 3, I'm from a home with mocking brothers, to sarcastic sisters, to a loving mom, to a great dad. Line 14 has an example of alliteration, sarcastic sisters, where the S sound is repeated. Also, lines 14 to 16 repeat the same two pattern as in stanza two. To a loving mom, to a great dad. Now that we have found examples where the poet is purposefully using sound for an effect, we need to decide what that effect actually is. To determine the feeling that the sound brings out, we can ask ourselves a series of questions. What does the repetition and rhyme make us think of? Well, the grammatical repetition impacts the poem by making it sound like a list, like the speaker is rambling on about some topic he or she is passionate about. We should also ask ourselves, are the are alliterative sounds, as an alliteration, harsh, like a P or a DR sound, or are the sounds soft, like S and L? What do they make us think of? The alliteration includes soft sounds, like S in Sarcastic Sisters, line 14, which almost sounds like a mocking s sound that a tongue could make when stuck out at someone you're mad or annoyed at. Finally, we should reflect. How does this sound impact a reader's feelings? Does it support or contrast with the poem's overall feeling? Because the poem on the whole is free verse and conversational, the sound definitely supports that idea. Repeated grammar and phrasing, to this, to that, to this, sounds like the speaker is listing his ideas rapidly, and rhyming words, like 
crime most of the time, add a rhythm or cadence to the poem, almost making it sound like a speech given to a group of people. The sound of this poem, therefore, impacts the overall feeling by emphasizing key ideas, adding to the speaker's conversational style, and revealing rhymes that add rhythm to the otherwise normal, everyday type of speech. So, we followed the following steps. 1. Read the poem aloud, listening for sound. 2. Ask yourself, what do the alliteration, repetition, and rhyme make me think of? Finally, reflect. How does the sound impact the poem? Does it support or contrast with the poem's overall feeling? Okay. Uh, can you please uh, take a screenshot of this, uh, of these three tips? Yes. So when you, this is what we will be doing like after a short break, you will be reading a poem aloud. Uh, mm -hmm. to listen for certain sounds. And I want you to answer those questions when you start reading the poem. I'll give you a break after that, and uh, like um, not a long break, 10 minutes a break. And, and yes. then you come back to read and answer those questions. So okay. number okay. one, you will be reading the poem aloud, and you're going to tell me where are the sounds in the poem. Number two, you are going to tell me the alliteration and the repetition and the rhyme that is found in the poem. How does it make you feel? How mm -hmm. does it make you think about? And of course, uh, the sound impact on the poem. Does it support the meaning, the idea? Did you like it? Did you do not like mm -hmm. it? How did you feel? And so on. This is yes. how you start liking the poetry and understanding the poetry. I believe yes. in you, and I'm sure 100% you will be able to figure it out, okay? okay. So let's have a break now. Yes. You will have a break. Like, come back at 6.15. 6.15, okay. Recording. So what, what is your task now is to listen to the poet reading the poem. And you answer the questions in the chat box, which is the what are the sound effects that you can hear and see in the poem, whether it is a rhythm, rhyme, alliteration, uh, onomatopoeia, whatever sounds are there. And the other important question, because this is how you will be answering your uh, exam questions. How yes. did you feel when you uh, hear them, when you read them? Uh, what what did, did you think about? What what did mm. the words make you think about? The music, yes. the sound, the tone, all of these, okay? So let's yes. now hear with the sound. Okay, let's let's hear it. Break, break, break by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Break, break, break. On my cold grey stones, O oh sea, And I would that my tongue could utter The thoughts that arise in me. O oh, well for the fisherman's boy, That he shouts with his sister at play. O oh, well for the sailor lad, That he sings in his boat on the bay, And the stately ships go on To their haven under the hill. But oh, for the touch of a vanished hand, And the sound of a voice that is still. Break, 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 At the foot of thy crags, O oh sea, But the tender grace of a day that is dead Will never come back to me. Thank you for watching. Okay. So I want you please to write down your answer, response. Uh, what are the sound effects you found in the poem? How mm -hmm. did they make you feel? And how did they make you think? And what do you think he's talking about? So re respond in writing first before you uh, give me your answer orally. Okay. 